it's an unlikely alliance to many. The leader of Iraq's most hardline Shia party with Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Muqtada al-Sadr emerged as one of Iraq's most powerful Shia clerics after the fall of Saddam Hussein. His anti-US militia was accused of killing hundreds of Sunnis between 2004 and 2008. All that while being backed by Iran. He remains one of Tehran's main proxies in the region. But recent events suggest a falling out with Iran. Thousands of Sadr supporters demonstrated in the streets recently calling for political reform in Iraq and also an end to foreign interference. The Iraqi people are demonstrating to demand that members of the Electoral Commission and its unjust electoral law be replaced. This law serves the interests of some parties in power, unfortunately. This commission has never been independent. Sadr is not alone. Other Iraqi leaders have spoken out against the government. Despite the Iraqi military's success against Daesh, its popularity has continued to fall. And the continued support by Iran has angered the centers. Especially Sadr, five of his supporters were killed in clashes with police earlier this year. That marked his re-emergence as a key power broker in Iraq and a possible search for patrons other than Tehran. That's a position its eternal rivals in Riyadh could be willing to fulfill. Shoaib Hassan, the newsmakers. Well, joining me now in the studio is Hisham Al Alawi. He's the ambassador of Iraq to Turkey. Good to have you with us here. Uh, so this is an interesting visit, isn't it? A Shia cleric supported by Iran uh, visiting Saudi Arabia. What's that all about? Well, it's not only the recent visit which is interesting. I think the uh, various activities and high-level visits that have happened between Iraq and Saudi Arabia are all relevant and important to look at. Uh, as you know, in February, there was a historical uh, visit by the Saudi Foreign Minister Adil Jubeir to Baghdad. Uh, that was uh, looked at as a clear indication of the uh, change in the Saudi's uh, position as far as opening up uh, relations with Iraq is concerned after the bilateral relations uh, discontinued in 1990. Following that, we had the important visit by Prime Minister Al Abadi to uh, to Saudi Arabia in June. Uh, subsequently, the two, two governments have decided to establish a high-level coordination council. We recently had a, an important visit by our Minister of Interior, Qasim al-Araji, and that was followed by a, a high-level visit also from Saudi Arabia to, uh, to Iraq. Uh, the two countries obviously are neighbors. Uh, there are uh, common interests, there are common threats that, uh, that face us and it, it makes sense obviously to work together to in address those issues and enhance the relations. The recent visit by Sayyid Muqtad al-Sadr is important because it, it, it uh, gave the recent developments another dimension. I think we all know that the countries in the region have suffered a lot in the past uh, decade or so because of the rise of sectarian tension, the rise of extremism and terrorism, we have so many conflicts in the region that has led to uh, that have led to political instability. There is a need for the countries to work together to complement each other economically and trade. But there have been a lot of differences, and one of the things that Saudi Arabia is very worried about, of course, is uh, the, the Iranian influence in Iraq. Is this um, perhaps a strategy by Saudi Arabia to try and uh, undercut that influence in Iraq? And if it is, is it going to work? Well, as you know, various officials in, uh, in the kingdom, in Saudi Arabia's kingdom, have been talking about uh, certain measures to uh, enhance their regional influence and counter the rise of Iranian influence in the region. In Iraq, we look at things in a different way. We are not interested in um, uh, maximizing regional uh, uh, negative uh, competition between Saudi Arabia and Iran or Turkey and Saudi Arabia and, and so on. We certainly believe that we need to work together in order to uh, uh, resolve those conflicts, create political stability, 
uh, reduce uh, sectarian tension, promote tolerance and peaceful coexistence, work more effectively together to counter terrorism, uh, and that would help to create the right environment that will enable us to complement each other economically, trade-wise. Uh, trade uh, there has been an agreement to increase the number of border gates between Iraq and Saudi Arabia. We are likely to see direct flights between the country, uh, between the two countries. Um, there is uh, interest in, in increasing the Saudi investment and contribution to uh, stabilization of those cities that have been damaged. Uh, as well as reconstruction, Th and, and those a represent a win-win situation for both both countries. So ties ha have improved uh, in the ways that you've mentioned, and Saudi Arabia is obviously uh, a pretty powerful ally to have in the region because it is uh, so rich. Is that one of the things that you're, that Iraq is looking at when it looks towards the future of, of, of rebuilding in Iraq? It's one of the features we have obviously taken into account. The other important thing also to highlight here. We, we want to have good, balanced relations with all our neighbors. We don't uh, want to have good relations with only Turkey or Iran. We also want to have good relations with our Arab brothers and neighbors. And Saudi Arabia, as you know, is an important country in the region and in the Arab world. The same with Jordan uh, and, and so on. So as far as we are concerned, we look at those, um, those activities as part of our policy to open up um, as far as our relations are concerned with, particularly with our neighbors, and hopefully that would help to address those issues that I just referred to, including resolving some of the conflicts in the region and working together to, to promote tolerance and counter the rise of extremism and terrorism. Well, but why Moqtada al sadr Because he is someone who has reinvented himself as the former head of a militia uh, which was responsible for um, thousands of sectarian killings. Now he's an extremely influential anti-government uh, protester. He, his influence has brought out um, thousands of peoples on the, uh, people on the streets to protest against the government, what he says is corruption and poor governance and poor services. Uh, is he the one you want trying to mend ties between Sunni and Shia? Well, obviously, he is an influential uh, leader. He has many supporters. He has uh, a significant number of MPs in the parliament. Uh, I won't classify him as anti-government. Uh, I think, as you know, he's a... He's very anti-government. That's what he said no, no, he, as, as a he, critic of Haider al Abadi. He, he continues to express himself to say that he's a supporter of Prime Minister Abadi and he, he obviously appreciates the... Uh, he has positive spoken achievements. out openly about but he's corruption anti in the government. Yeah, he, he calls for reform. We all call for reform. We know that... And, he, uh, he, and that's what he says, that it, his, his protests and his rallies that he calls are to put pressure on Haider al Abadi to push through these reforms. Well, so the, the he is Prime a bit of a thorn in the side for the government, isn't he? Well, the Prime Minister himself obviously is keen on uh, having those reforms. And it's been difficult to move as fast as he wishes to see, given the challenges that we have in Iraq. Uh, the past three years, as you know, have not been that easy. We had the security challenge and we have done extremely well in terms of liberating our cities and provinces. Uh, and the recent victory in Mosul was a remarkable achievement. We feel very confident that we will see uh, the end of Daesh in Iraq, hopefully by the end of this year. Uh, in terms of the economic challenge, as you know, because of the significant drop in the prices of oil, that wasn't also a, a major challenge. And uh, the government has done well to take us through those difficult three years, more so when you take into account that there was also an increase in the defense expenditure because of the war against Daesh. Um, I think Iraq has also done well when it comes to um, developing our relations with our neighbors. We've managed to move away from tensions between different countries in the region and we are now looked at uh, more um, positively and um, potentially we could play a, a positive role in reducing tension between the different regional powers and hopefully that would help to create the right environment that we need to see in the region. Yeah, better relations are going to be crucial because as you've said, uh, it was a great victory in Mosul. 
but now the Iraqi government is facing uh, the problems of trying to rebuild and reconstruct uh, in Mosul. The Iraqi government says uh, it wants something like $100 billion uh, in, a, ten in a 10 year national plan. Um, how is the Iraqi government going to get that money? How important is it to uh, have foreign assistance? Well, uh, obviously, we have made it very clear that we appreciate uh, any support we have received in the past few years um, to, uh, to maximize our efforts against uh, the terrorist organization of Daesh. We know very well that um, restabilizing those cities and uh, towns and rebuilding them uh, will need a lot of resources. That's why we look forward to having as much support as possible from our friends in the region and beyond. Uh, there is no doubt that the level of material damage, uh, materialistic damage that has happened, uh, whether it in Mosul, Nineveh province, or in Salah al-Din, Ambar, and other provinces, is significant. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I don't think the figure of 100 billion over 10 years is a is is I mean is a big figure. Uh, we know it will take. Uh, uh, probably that much or even higher, uh, a higher figure to uh, not only restabilize but reconstruct those uh, cities and enable people to have their uh, livelihood back. Uh, we are encouraged by the level of voluntary return to uh, the provinces and cities that have been uh, liberated. The government has a comprehensive plan. There is a task team. Uh, that is led by the Secretariat General of the Council of Cabinet. He's working with provincial governments as well as with the UN to okay. um, provide the basic services to maintain peace and security, to reopen the schools and healthcare facilities, and who then continue, inshallah, with the reconstruction uh, processes. So, w one other side effect of uh, the battle for Mosul was that it did cause tensions with. Turkey, because Turkish forces that obviously went into uh, northern Iraq to help Peshmerga fighters uh, take Mosul. Um, you've said in the past that Turkey and Iraq need to work together to get over their differences because that is beneficial to the region. Uh, has there been progress made towards that? Are you happy with the way um, the relationship between Turkey and Iraq is progressing? Because there could be other um, tensions over the next battle, which is Talafar. We certainly believe it would be very important to resolve the Bashika camp issue and have full withdrawal of the Turkish military forces from Bashika as soon as possible. Prime Minister Yeldirim, during his visit to Baghdad in January this year, uh, promised Prime Minister Abadi to do so. I think the recent developments on the ground in terms of the liberation of Mosul, the liberation of uh, Sinjar, and hopefully the liberation of Talafa that is likely to happen very soon would create the environment that will make make it easier for the Turkish government to take that decision and uh, withdraw their forces. We certainly believe that uh, the two countries need to work together uh, to enhance cooperation in various areas. I mean, there are, as you know, uh, common threats, security threats that face the two countries. Uh, and certainly there is a, a great potential to enhance cooperation in this area. Uh, we are concerned about the significant drop in the volume of trade between the two countries that has happened in the past three years. Um, we, uh, uh, Iraq was the third most important trade partner for Turkey and the second most important trade export uh, destination for Turkish products after Germany, based on the figures that we had in 2013. So there is a need to have the right environment to enable us to work towards increasing the trade volume uh, back to the highest level that we've seen. Uh, we are making good progress when it comes to resolving some of the, di the differences we had as far as water resource management is concerned, the, uh, Euphrates and, and Tigris River. Uh, there is also a great potential to enhance cooperation in the energy sector, which is likely to be a win-win situation for both countries. So plenty uh, of scope uh, for and so discussion. On. And in order to achieve that, we certainly need to have the right environment, and resolving the Bashir Kakam issue will help us to achieve that. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Pleasure.